Crippling fear. Oh, sad times. But now we get a mega Radisson. <laughs> well, well, well. You've angered her. Now she comes for you. That made it worse. That's made it worse. Hello guys and welcome to the channel if you've not been here before, I hope you enjoy your stay. Today we're looking at PNLR Console of Revival, which gives you a Thopter's Haste, which is an interesting sentence to start with considering this isn't really a Thopter build. However, whenever you play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, you create a 1-1 Thopter. So there you go, she makes Thopters using that strange kind of synergy, you don't really know how it works in, in terms of the lore and flavour. But it's cool nonetheless that Thopters come to her aid whenever she does some magical weird things. The deck essentially wants to do lots of stuff from Exile, so white and red doesn't really have traditional draw as such, so it has to do stuff like Exile cards on top of someone's deck and then and play them, Rend Resolve, stuff like this lets you lets you do that. Um, Light of the Stage is probably the most classic one that we're all aware of, and I've just realised how big that demon is in the middle. When you look at this card from a distance, especially playing in paper, um, you can't quite see the scale of this, and in hindsight, that is a gigantic demon in the middle, and it's quite terrifying to see um, how big they are. Although, saying that, this is Rakdos we're talking about, and Rakdos probably enjoy playing around giant demons, so maybe to the Rakdos cult, this is normal, a normal day for them, and there's nothing to worry about. And in fact, they're lighting their lanterns up and keeping them nice and warm and lit, so perhaps my perception of this card is... Um, not one of fear, but one of joy. If you want to see the deck list, don't forget to check out the description below. But until then, look at me play the deck. Watch me unravel its secrets and see maybe we can learn something or find something enjoyable from it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy what you see. The sands seems pretty good, doesn't it? Against Errant and Giada, Flash Flying, you may look at the top card of your library any time. And you may cast spells with Flash of Flying from the top of your library. Okay, so it's going to be a responsive kind of deck although they've gone for a kite cell cleric not too bothered about this it doesn't actually do anything now so if they had kicked it it would have tapped two creatures for four mana yeah it's a it's pretty un underwhelming un uncommon to be honest but you know there's probably synergies in the deck that go together well with it. It's obviously they could cast it from the top with their Arta, but oh watch of the spheres Whenever another flying comes in, gets plus one, plus one, plus one. Okay, cool. Flying tribal, here we go. Something a bit different. Monastery mentor. You know I really want to do this. That has changed the flow of time and space now, because I always want to establish this guy early in order to get some free monks, although they could just have some... There's lots of removal in the game, so he might not actually survive. It's going to go for flash in in the main phase, I guess, to add power. Okay. It's going to be five flying. That is quite quite a chunk, I have to say. Um, but yeah, let's take care of the Errant and Giada here. And we really do need some extra lands in the future, so I do hope we, get, we pull a few more because obviously we want to get some free flyers in order to combat their flyers. And Pia Nala does let us do that. We might be discarding the Averton, but she is going to be a really super nice way of combating them if we can actually get her down. But until then, we're going to have to deal with all these guys. Now, something interesting here is Robert the Rich actually has reach. So they might not actually realize that if we don't hover too much. A lot of people don't actually see that because he's kind of like dangling from a window. So they're actually going to draw a card here with the wedding announcement. Nice. So we hit a land drop, which is pretty good. Um, thing is, if we can just attack with Robert and see what we get at the top, maybe. They've got more cards. Yeah, let's be aggressive. Yeah, it feels a bit weird sometimes, but we get... A Segovian Angel! We actually get a blocker! Okay! That was very lucky. So, they are a very aggressive deck because you, you can see their curve is super low. Um, Flowering of the White Tree. Non Legends get the power boost. I mean, that's something we would love to pull in our deck. Ugh! That's a really, really strong pull for them. OK, 
curiosity. Let's try and exile that. I don't want them to draw three cards and we get some boosts. Sadly, we can't really utilize our boosts from the floor, but... Oh, Topple Geist comes in and taps something. Oh, that's annoying. That is quite annoying, actually. And we're going to take six now. Damn, this Watcher of the Spheres is... Um, it's going to kill us. It is actually going to kill us. Yeah, it's getting a bit scary, to be, to be honest. A lot of triggers. Boom, boom, boom. Can we actually... How much damage can we deal here? If we go for Strike It Rich, it would be another... So we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's not going to be enough. So I think we just attack. Let's leave that back just in case. Yeah, we want to be fairly aggressive. And we get a Ruin Merker Bat from Exile. So now we can go for Peer, go for the Ruin Merker Bat and get an Ethopter. So this might be enough to stabilize us here. I feel very lucky being able to steal their things. It's a funny looking bat. It's kind of like a dog. That is the doggiest bat I've ever seen. Well, Pegasus. Okay. Looks like our Monastery Mentor might be uh, MVP here. Come on in with that thing. Flying lifelink. If you descended scry one, okay. Seems legit. Yeah, this flying the white tree is proven to be quite annoying, really. Have they got a way to tap our guys? Or perhaps something else is coming along here. All I know is if we use Strike It Rich, we're going to get a power boost of plus four on our monks. Let's block that. I don't really feel like going too low. One is to cast. So that is four mana at flash. And now they've got another boost. Oh, geez. That's a humongous boost. Okay. I mean, we could just flash Avacyn in their turn and get them on the swing back. But they do have blue mana up. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to pass. We can't get through. The defense is just way too good. Okay, no attacks. What have they got here? If it's just Eren and Giada, not that bothered. We've got one, two. We're going to have three flying blockers. Now, they have a counter spell, which is screwed. They're going to use cast out. So that's probably going to get one of our flyers. So they're going to get the... They're going to get the bat. Okay. So the alpha strike here. They don't have much have any vigilance so i think if they alpha strike they might lose ah they respect the uh return attack stuff gains indestructible until that turn so we have to block some chunky things do we still die i think we still oh no, that's got reach so we'll block another four. You know what? That Rob the Rich, I think, legitimately saved us. We still... We take seven. Down to two. If Avacyn... If something dies here, then... Avacyn's going to kill us. They've got two blockers. All right, I think we go for showdown here because we get any... Oh, look at those prowess triggers. So we need some land and maybe just a spell or two. Oh, look at that. That was friggin' awesome. And we never saw what the lands get. 
the spells gave us, but that's such a shame. That would have been such a spectacular finish. Would they have been able to block? No, because even if even with the current board state, they block the Avacyn here and they block the Monastery Mentor, they would still take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and yeah, Pia would have given us extra uh, H creatures with the free spells from Shadow of the Skull. So this is a fantastic card, giving us four potential hits there. Amazing. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored, and because of that, the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. Okay, I'm going to risk this hand, mainly because we have the removal and Showdown of the Skulls is excellent. Excellent card here. Let's go for the gate. Next turn, ramp. The face breaker might be good to get out soon as well. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. See how we get on. Mana type. Okay, so I, th I think I'm going to leave the mana type up rather than play the cold steel. It might not pay off, but we shall see. If they play Yorgmoth, we counter it here. And if they don't play Yorgmoth, we could go for the Brutal Cathar anyway. Either way, I think it's not too shabby doing this. It always feels good. Resolving a Mana Tithe and unresolving opponent's spells. So now do we go for... What do we go for? We go for the face breaker. Let's try and break some faces here. Can't block the paladin, but yeah. I can't imagine them sacking either of these with the Yorg Moth, but I've I've been wrong before. A Yara. A Yara kidding me? Dare I track it? Okay. Hmm, that's gonna get annoying. Plum and a heck, and an ornithopter. I think we get rid of the Ayara. See how they block here. So we get a treasure, that's pretty good. Turn the treasure into real mana, so to speak. So. They can get Yorgmoth, sacrifice two things to kill the Brutal Cathar and get y a Yara back. And now we could be in a bit of trouble because we don't have removal. And now they're going to draw a shed ton of cards. Synthesizer. Let's go for the showdown here. This is going to be... give us the most options here. Chandra. Okay, so we have the... Removal for Yorgmoth in the following turn. Um, we're going to pass. I wonder if they do want to kill their stuff. I mean, their stuff's kind of useful. They didn't even want to get rid of the Ornithopter. Protection from humans. Kind of annoying. We've all got human-y people. Okay. Fine. Cult Conscript. Okay, so they're empty-handed. <clears throat> if we get a board wipe or something, it's going to screw them over quite a bit, but... Oh, so much value. They're just... They're just going to overwhelm us here with value, I think. Only even none skeleton creature died under your control, so to get this back, they have to lose something else. Intriguing how they cared more about the Inti than the Face Breaker, but... Oh, that's actually really powerful with York Moth. They can keep doing it over and over again. Hmm. So in order to keep the Monastery... I'm thinking Meal is going to be good as well, because whenever they target our stuff, we actually get to draw a card. 
fatal push on top. That's annoying. That is very annoying. <clears throat> we do Mila. We can still go for Chandra. Yeah, we'll do this. Nice. Putting more counters on the Mila is good. Although, to be honest, the Fatal Push is going to make this whole point mute. But it's my turn. Saying that, they'll have to recast Yorgmoth and it's going to get fairly expensive at this point. Swing in, we get ourselves a treasure. Uh, you know, we don't want to go for that yet because that feels like that's going to be a waste of a free spell off the top. <clears throat> So Yorgmoth is now 8 mana. That's a lot. And they only have 7. So we're in a pretty, pretty decent situation. If, the, if they if they lose something there, they can fail push one of our creatures, which is kind of annoying. So we only get to draw one card, which is a shame. But yeah, the fail push was a pretty good top deck for them there, I have to say. A Yara is really good in the deck. Just let some sacrifice creatures to draw cards. In a strange way, Yara is a little bit like Yorgmoth. She's like a balanced Yorgmoth, whereas Yorgmoth is like a broken, broken Yorgmoth. So we get to draw a card here. Oh well. Goodbye, dog. Or fox, should I say. Love Mila, such a, such a powerful card. Nice little defense system. So it looks like we're going to lose Chandra and then take two. Yeah. Could be worse, I guess. We're done here. Black market connections. Oh, dear. That's going to be really quite difficult to get around this now. Lightning bolt. Lots of... Very cool removal, though, I have to say. So, now what? What's the hold up? I suppose we make P and LR slightly harder to kill as well. They could have another removal spell in their hand. Which they do. Man. Although, no counters on it, you say. Suck my kiss. I think we got him there. Slightly. <laughs> Take that. That's what we get. Cheeky. Now here he's Warcrafting. Ooh. Let's kill something else. Slow him down with killing the ornithopter. Oh, this is good. This is a, this is quite. This is quite good, guys. We've only got fourteen life, but we're starting to get juicy here. Ah, oh, damn. We can only play that. Okay, fair enough. But we're still going to get the opter counter here. Incredible. Something else on top good. Robber the Rich. That's not going to be so good. And yeah, we swing forth. Down to 12. And we get a treasure. Incredible. Incredible ton of events there. Super lucky with those two removal spells. They're just going to... They're just going to lose two. Wow, they didn't make a blocker. I guess they didn't... That, that is a bit odd, because the the blocker there would have stopped them taking the five or so here. I think we've really screwed them now. Exploring really doesn't help them here. Oh my goodness. It was looking super bad, but we kind of annihilated them there. Freaking awesome. Amazing. All right, let's 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 keep this. Mythweaver Pock is a son of a bitch. It's so strong. It's so strong. Oh my goodness. Utopia Sprawl. Um, okay. Okay. 
so they're going to have three mana next turn. That's pretty quick. Um, a plant. Okay, there's a plant. There's a plant. Let's go for the cold steel heart. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted because someone's just showed me something, and yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I can't say anything. Um, oh my god, this is really crazy. I suppose the benefit here is we can kill the pock with the La Chandra. La Chandre. Oh man, imagine you know like in Overwatch when you in Overwatch when you get your ultimate there's like a really awesome voice line like when Hanzo fires his arrows. He's that really sick Japanese voice line. Imagine Chandra did that. Like Kamehameha or something. Okay, now it's six six. How the heck are we gonna kill this? Oh it's not a land. So we can actually use the Skyclave, I guess. Yeah, let's do this. Get rid of this pock. Is that cursor meant to be like that? It just looks really odd. Cord of calling X equals one. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Halfling, which means they're going to be able to cast it again. What a bastard. Let's overwhelm them with planes walkers. Let's go. All the absolute babes of magic. Elspeth and Chandra, or Scully Hansen, actually. Look at that face. They really want to get Mythweaver Myth Weaver Pock out, don't they? How the heck are we going to kill it? <laughs> How the hell are we going to kill this now? Come on, let's top take something good. Um, What do we do? I think we just make another creature. Hmm. Hmm. We just create more blockers. How problematic is this? 8-8. Eight, eight. It doesn't have trample. Um. Hmm. Quintorius. Let's ramp into Quintorius. Oh, today's my lucky day. Oh, I shouldn't have done I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone for P and R first. Okay, that's fine. At least we get a thop different when we just Gather four. Removal spell would be nice. One power stone. Okay, fine. We're doing lots of cool stuff, don't get me wrong, but I'm just a bit scared. Because the pock can, like, I don't know, the, the ramping is so hard with pock. <laughs> you just dies from regular stuff. Does that give trample? No. Last much of the ends. Well, we're dead. Draw 10 and put any creatures into play. Well, well, well. Sometimes you lose... Oh. Only two creatures out of all that. That's kind of weird. Only two creatures. That's got haste. Ugh. Haste. Not good, not good. I should be dead, to be honest. Coming in for me. I guess we'll just block this. Six, six, haste trouble. I don't actually care about taking that. Take six, go to 21. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards in hand. They're going to discard two, which is kind of terrifying to think they can't play any. Surely they can play more things. Wow, just lands? Kind of weird, right? Kind of weird. Right, let's see what we get off the top card of the deck. This will be easy. Yeah, let's play this. Some more draining. I guess we can just try and overwhelm them with stuff. Counters on a creature becomes an angel and gains flying. Um, issue is, doesn't really I guess we can do that try and take care of the Gargaroth if we flying
I mean, we're probably dead anyway, aren't we? It's got reach, so it can block. We can discard a card. We'll, we'll do that. Becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Land. So now we could just use the Sacred Fire on this and save the Strangle. Although it only gives us one red source. It's fine. We'll let the damage go through. I think we're dead, guys, but you know what? This has been a pretty cool, cool game. Okay. Kill the Gargoroth. I still don't get what the hell's in the hand. They could put they could put anything into the into play. Harrow? Is there a hexproof coming up here? Hmm. Interesting timing. I suppose we'll just kill the halfling as well. Strangle the halfling. That feels really mean, but there we go. Okay. So what other horrors await us here? Land equals land. That's that's the pinnacle of uh, wizard's design. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're definitely dead. Give all the creatures plus X plus X trample. Man, that's I've died to that far too many times today. There are other cards in Magic, are there? I mean, I think there are. But, yeah. Um, all this trample. So that's 50, 60-ish. Yeah, we're dead. Mythweaver pop. Proven. It's just kind of boring. And, um, yeah. Moving on. Okay, this seems pretty sweet. I like it. Even though we've got a lot of tank lands. The ramp should help. Um, Basriket is a normally I really love Basriket but I feel like we don't have any many creatures to abuse him. Sorin is a mono black vampire build. Normally I did say that once and they were using a bloody control build. I mean this could be control. Thoughtseize. I wonder what they get rid of. Because we can't play anything on turn two anyway. Rather annoyingly. Or turn three, apparently. <laughs> so. Oh, we can. Nice. We got the power stone now. That's good. So now we can maybe start threatening their vampires. We can reach creature planes. This is good. This is like lightning bolt, basically. Lightning bolt with a disenchant built in. That's kind of cool. I like cards like this. Costing seems fair as well. And the artwork is sick. Cards that simple like this. But vampires are going to be huge. Is it going to be freaking... Oh, oh my god, it's always Champion of Dusk. They used to do this in 60 card. That's actually quite annoying. That is annoying. I think we're just going to flash in the Avacyn. In their turn. Creatures you control can indestructible. Yeah, so they're going to attack... And then we can, um, hmm. I hope they put the counter on, I don't know, I don't know to be honest, I don't actually know, if they put it on Champion of Dusk we won't really kill it in combat, oh nice, interesting, okay, let's see what happens here then, you have activated my trap card, go, I choose you Archangel Avacyn. So now the only way to save your Henny would be to sacrifice the champion. Do they want to do that? Death Touch, Life Link, Haste, Indestructible. We win that combat. And they do that. They do do that. Nice. So now we can kill Sorin, which is perfect. Long Vigilance. Smash him in the nuts. Delightful. Love smashing people in the testicles. Three, three mana open. So we can also kill the Yeheni now. Oh, this is delightful. This is absolutely delightful. Look at these cards. These are all the best cards. Best cards. But not the most broken cards. Just mm, a bit of a misnomer there, isn't it? How can be best, but not the best? Fine. Slightly underneath the best. Because you don't really see people use these, but I love them. I love these cards. 
This is so sick. Flash 4-4. Four, four. Love Flash. Definitely one of my favoritest mechanics. What do we do here then? Maybe we give it Jaya and then just kill the Dracula, which is a weirdly weird thing to say. Maybe we attack, kills damage, and attack and to that creature. Yeah, let's do that. Slap it in the face. Who needs the sun when you've got me around? So basically, it's quite a weak minus. Because if you think about it, we just spent, what was it, two loyalty to deal three damage. Doesn't sound very glamorous when you put it that way, does it? Choose a creature, deal damage to equal to the number of attacking creatures. Crippling fear. Oh, sad times. But now we get a Mega Ravison. <laughs> well, 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 you've angered her. Now she comes for you. That made it worse. That made it worse. Right, if we go for P in the La, we can get some free Thop Tars. Let's go, let's go. I improvise. Ooh, low Warhound means we get a land in addition. That's delightful, isn't it? Boom, boom, pow. I freaking love this deck. Also, do you like the flavour of Avison when she flips? So when she's white, she's like stoic, a protector of Innistrad. And then she becomes insane when two people die and she loses vigilance. How cool is that flavour? She loses her defensive nature and she becomes aggressive, angry, evil. You know, so cool. That's where flavour is at the best. That was that was a cool card. Let's go Kevin of Souls. Um, I could do... Let's go memes. Let's go Badger. So our badges are uncounterable. That's pretty cool. And what else can we do? We've got Rip Apart. I guess so. this one, Great Power. Let's see what's on top of their library. Cast something for free. Hey, we got a kill spell. So we win. Goodbye. Sorin. Charge! A bit ironic saying charge when Eowyn is in my hand. But there we have it. Uh, a delightful set of games, I think. Something really weird happened today, guys. Something really weird. And it scared me. It really terrified me. I actually enjoyed playing Magic on Arena. And um, I don't know what it was. I think it was the variation of opponents. It's just nice to see different things, isn't it? It's like... Going on a holiday, going somewhere new, trying different things, tasting different foods. And this deck provided that. Red White always does this to me. Red White gives me the gives me the gifts, it gives me the joy. And Pinalar, the beautiful, beautiful artwork here from Marta Nael. Incredible card. It doesn't seem that good, but it is so freaking cool. It's tempting me to buy this on paper. It's only a few dollars, I think. I hope. I think I need to own this card. So cool. But yeah, I really had a great time. It's really powerful as well. Really powerful. Especially with something like Contorius on the battlefield where playing stuff from Exile does two damage. It's just so good. This deck is so freaking good, guys. You need to craft this. You have to craft this. Um, What were some of the best cards? Well, as I already said, Contorius canned. I've just noticed, actually, I don't have any token doublers in the deck. I don't even need it. Because I don't even think... It just didn't need it. Like, you could put Anointed Procession... You know, the, the white Oja, um, Mondrak, you could. And maybe you could argue that I probably should have put them here. But they are four mana, so it's pretty slow for the speed we want to go for. We don't have that much of a big curve, to be honest. Um, so some of the other star cards, Shodan Skulls, this was incredible. This is so freaking good with PNL, crazily good for, for, for just a card you don't see that often. You didn't see me use this, but I think this could also be an insanely good game finisher. Kind of says you could, you could just have double strike. If you've got those Athopters out, you play this, you, they all get bigger, fly over the top, take them out, pretty good. What else did I like? Just stuff that lets you play stuff at the top. Lelia is pretty sweet. Rob the Rich seems decent. Oh, it, no, nothing really by itself 
is that incredible, apart from the showdown and the Quintorius. But yeah, I think flowering the white tree is good as well. But yeah, I think everything worked together really well. It's a pretty tight build. I'm glad I went back and kind of refined it a bit. I was going to record it with my first version, but then I changed a few things. And yeah, it's so smooth. I don't normally gush about the game like this, but yeah, this is so fun. People need to use this color combination more. I'm sick of seeing blue, X, Sultai, Esper, Grixis. Let's give the other colors some love. I want to see mono white. I want to see mono um, red more. We see a lot of mono green, mono blue, mono black. Poor white and red. Poor, poor white and red. This this is so fun. And it's actually really, really good. I, I think you, you'll you get some really good wins out of this because it's just so quick. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, if you appreciate what I've done here, like, subscribe, the usual stuff. You know, I say it every time, you know, but I don't even have to say it. Um, but if you do want to support the channel, that's the most important part, really, to keep the channel going and keep keep me, you know, keep me on the rise, meteoric rise one day. Come on, um, support me via Ko-fi or Patreon. Become a patron, support the channel, get a custom video. Simple as that. And the details are below. And another way you can support me as well is watch another video. So, what are you going to watch next? Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.